Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday School for this week. It is October 4th. I'm happy to be with you today to share another Sunday School lesson with you. I can see the background today uh, is of a game called Trouble. Maybe you guys have played it. Uh, it's a game I played as a kid and really loved all the time. Um, my family and I, we'd, we'd get together for like Christmas and Thanksgiving and these things. And me and my brothers and my uh, aunts and uncles, we'd gather around, we'd, we'd play Trouble together. And we just had a great time. I'm somebody that loves games. I love to play games. Uh, board games, card games, uh, like cribbage. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't work on the green screen, does it? Pretty cool though. Cribbage, it's a great game. I play this all the time with uh, Mrs. Bjorklund and uh, my dad and my father-in-law, my brothers too. I love cribbage, love to play cards. All right, do you guys like to play cards? Maybe play goldfish or um, war or something like that. There's all kinds of games you can play. Um, you got these jokers in there get in the way sometimes we don't need jokers unless you lose a car then it's kind of good to have a joker you can write on and make a new card out of it but games are great they're a lot of fun as long as everybody agrees on what the rules are have you ever tried to play a game without any rules you can't really do it right we need rules to play uh, games whether they be card games or board games, or sports. We need rules to help us play. The rules help us understand what we can and cannot do, and it helps to ensure that uh, in the end, things are fair and just, and that there can be uh, a clear winner in things. Now games are one thing, life is another. We know that life isn't a game, unless, of course, you're playing the game of life. But the lives we live are not a game. Right? So does that mean we don't need rules? No, of course not. We need rules for our lives so that it can be well for us, that we can be uh, safe and secure. That's why we have laws to protect us um, and to protect property and, and people and um, like our natural resources, all the stuff. It's, it's good to have rules, it's good to have laws because they help to protect us. And God knows that. He knows how we need rules for our life. So God in the Old Testament gave his rules to the Israelites. So if you remember where we've been the last couple of weeks, the Israelites, they were set free from slavery, crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness. Uh, they were hungry, and God gave them manna and quail to eat. They were thirsty, and God gave them uh, water from the rock to drink. And now today, we find God giving them something else, not food or water, but the Ten Commandments. The people, as they wandered through the desert, they came to Mount Sinai, seen here in the background. And God called Moses up the mountain. And there, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Now, you might know what those are, you might not, and that's okay. That's why we're here to learn. But God gave Ten Commandments, or rules, for us to live by. These commandments are God's gift to us so that it can go well with us in our lives. Because God knows that we need rules. We need guiding principles to follow. We need to know how to take care of one another so that our lives, that our, our societies can, can thrive and they can be safe places for you and for me and for all people. The Ten Commandments, are we break them down into two parts. The first part of the commandments talks about how you and me are supposed to live uh, with God, how we are supposed to treat God. There up on the mountain, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And if you've seen pictures, kind of like this one, you'll see that there's two stone tablets. 
on which the commandments are written. On one tablet, we have the commandments that teach us about how to treat God. And on the other tablet are the commandments about how we are supposed to treat each other. The first tablet, the first three commandments are, you shall have no other gods. You shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And you shall remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Those three together are about our life with God. So the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, is God's way of telling us, I want to be first in your life. I want to be so important to you, more important than anything else. Remember, God is number one. That's a good way to remember the first commandment. One God, God is number one. The second commandment, you shall not use the Lord's name in vain, means that when we use God's name, when we say God, we want to do that in a way that is respectful and that is faithful. So we don't use God's name as a way of, of cursing or swearing, right? And your parents may have talked to you about this already, and I hope that they have. But more than that, we want to make sure that when we, when we use the name of God, that we don't misuse it for ourselves or to, to kind of harm others, right? God's name is, is holy, and we want to keep it that way, and we want to treat it with respect and use it in the right way. The third commandment is you shall remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. What we call Sunday, that is our Sabbath day. And if you remember in the beginning of the Bible, when God created the heavens and the earth, he did it in six days. And then on the seventh day, the Sabbath day, he rested. And so for us, God wants us, on the one hand, to have a day of rest. God didn't work seven days a week. He took that six day, six day off and rested. And God wants us to rest. He wants us to rest our bodies and, and to relax and have a time to kind of charge our batteries. And he also wants us to make time for, uh, for him right, by coming to church or by doing things like watching this lesson and talking about it with your family, reading the Bible, those kinds of things. God wants you to make time for him in your life. And that's what the third commandment's about, making time for God in your life and for finding time for rest, because we need both those things. So that's the first three commandments about how we live in relationship to God. And the rest of them are about how you and me live together with everybody else in the world. The first of these commandments, the fourth commandment, is you shall honor your mother and father. To honor your mother and father means certainly to uh, do the things that they ask, right? And to treat them with respect. And it's also to try to live in a way that reflects the love they have for you. So we don't want to be disrespectful or rude. We want to, to, to obey as best we can, right? but also to le live good lives right? as a way of honoring our parents. And so that's very important right? because what God wants us to have homes that are, are happy and safe and, and good places to grow up in. And we can be a part of that as, as children, you can be a part of that. And then parents have a really great responsibility to make sure that they are living according to God's laws, according to his commandments, and that they are helping you to learn that as well in your life. So that's the, that was the fourth commandment. The fifth is you shall not commit murder. You shall not kill other people. That's very important. God created each of us, and God loves us so very much, and he wants uh, us to protect and care for one another. And so we don't want to kill people. And more than that, we want to make sure that we are protecting people's lives and taking care of one another. The sixth commandment 
is you shall not commit adultery. And that means when we are married and when we are in relationships that we uh, are trustworthy with our partners, with our husbands or our wives, well, we want to make sure that we treat that relationship with respect and that, that our relationships, our intimate relationships, are just between us and our partners and those that we love. And so that's a very important one. That'll, that'll be very important as you grow older and you start to have relationships with other people as well. We want to make sure that we are trustworthy and that we take care of those that we love. The seventh commandment, thou shall not steal. We don't want to take other people's stuff. We don't want other people taking our things. It's not a good way for people to live. If people just stole anything they wanted, that would be uh, chaos. It's like playing a game with no rules. Right? So we want to remember to uh, not take things that don't belong to us. And we want to also help other people take care of those, their things. So if we know about someone who stole something, it's really the best thing to uh, have them return that or tell, tell an adult or a proper authority about that so they can help to make that right. The eighth commandment is thou shall not bear false witness. What does that mean? What does it mean to bear false witness? It's not about, not about bears. Right? Uh, it's about uh, not telling lies about other people right? and being truthful. You might know what it's like to have someone say a lie about you. Right? And you know how much that can hurt and how bad that might make you feel. And maybe you've told a lie about someone else. I know I have. And as I think about it now, it makes me feel pretty bad that I did that. But I know that God will forgive me and has forgiven me. So we want to remember that we don't want to say false things about other people. We want to be truthful like God is truthful. Because when we tell the truth, we, be, we are trustworthy. And trust is so important for our lives together. The ninth and the tenth commandments uh, pretty much go together. As thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. That's number nine. And number ten is kind of a long list, but I'll sum it up like this. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's stuff. And covet's kind of a weird word. It's not something we use every day. But covenant coveting is about um, like wanting other wanting other people's stuff so much that it causes a harm and disorder in our lives and in their lives and so we want to make sure that um, that we're not doing that and it's kind of hard to explain. I, I struggle to explain this commandment all the time in confirmation about what it really means. But I think it's important to kind of think of it like this. If there's something that we want so badly that we're willing to break the other commandments, right? if we're willing to lie or steal or cheat to get it, that's wrong. And we don't want to do that. Or if we want something so bad, it begins to kind of control our lives and it's all we can think about and, and we disregard everything else. That's really bad too. That's no way to live. God doesn't want us to live that way. It's okay to want stuff. As long as that want doesn't start to get us in trouble or cause problems for us or for other people. So that's it. That's the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods, where God is one, first commandment. Number two, you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. Use God's name properly and respectfully. Three, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Make time for God. Go to church when you're able. Read your Bible, pray, all those things, and to get rest. Take time off from school and work and take care of yourself. 
God wants you to be taken care of, and we have to care for ourselves just as we care for others. Number four, honor your mother and father. They love you, treat them well, and parents treat your children well too. Everything starts in the home, and it's so important that our, that our homes and our families are places where everybody feels safe, everyone uh, is loved. Right? Honor your mother and father. Number five, don't kill people. Don't do it. Protect others. Defend other people. Don't be a bully. Don't try to tear people down. We want to raise people up. Number six, do not commit adultery. Be trustworthy in your relationships. As parents, as parents, we want to be trustworthy in that. As married people, we want to honor our spouses. And we want you to do that too as you grow up and you have relationships and you get married. We want you to be trustworthy and to really love the other person. Number seven, thou shalt not steal. Don't steal. It's wrong, right? It doesn't feel good to take or have our stuff taken away. Right? And it's not good to, it doesn't really feel good to have something that's not yours anyway. Right? So don't steal. Number eight, don't bear false witness. Don't tell lies about other people. Be trustworthy, be honest, be good. Nine and 10, don't covet your neighbor's stuff. It's okay to want, but if that want causes us to do things that are bad, well then we have entered into the, the territory of coveting and that is not good for us or for anybody. So there's the commandments. Those are God's rules for us. And it might be hard to remember those. It's only 10, but it's, there's a lot there. But Jesus puts it this way. Someone came up to Jesus one time, and they said, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourselves. Love God, love neighbor. The Ten Commandments broken down into two. Love God, love your neighbor. That's, that's, that's the rules, folks. That's the commandments. And if we follow those things the best that we can, it'll go well for us in our lives. And if we fall short and we don't, if we don't love our neighbor as well, and if we uh, confess that and ask God to forgive us, he will. Because God loves us so very much. That's why he gave us the commandments. That's why he gave us Jesus. God loves you. God loves me. God loves everybody. So. That's our lesson for today. Let's take a time to pray together. Uh, but before we do, just a reminder, I, want, I hope you are taking the time as a family to kind of talk about these things, to open up your Bibles and read them together. In this case, the Ten Commandments, you can find them in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. You can find them also in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, if I remember. Hopefully I got that right. And one other thing I forgot to mention for you parents out there. The Bible says we are to teach our children these things so that when they grow up, it'll go well with them. So let's not forget to teach our children God's ways for their lives. All right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for uh, your Ten Commandments, for uh, the rules you have given us to help us to live with you and with one another. Help us to uh, follow those commandments uh, according to our ability. Help us in that, Lord. Help us to love you and help us to love one another. Thank you for all that you have given us this day and all that you do for us. Thank you for loving me. In your name we pray. Amen.
All right, friends, I hope you have a great day. Um, you are loved. God loves you. Your parents love you. Be well and follow the rules. Bye.